Hi thinkers, welcome to a new course on ThinkX Academy. This course is data structures in Java and in this course I'm going to create videos on data structures and we're going to also implement them in Java. So uh, every week I'm going to create a new module and that will cover a particular data structure with its applications and implementation in Java programming. So in this tutorial we are going to uh, get a brief introduction on data structures. So basically I'm going to tell you about what are data structures, the applications, the terminologies like time complexity and various things are there. So you need to grasp all these basics that I'm going to teach today because these basics will help you build the foundation before starting with the complex data structures like binary trees, linked lists, stacks and all of that. So if you're new to this channel, make sure to like this video and also subscribe our channel. I will keep creating these important tutorials for you guys. So make sure to support us by sharing our content also so that this, uh, this video and all these educational videos can help all the students also. So let's start with the very first things. What are data structures? And we, we will have to understand all the terms and terminologies. So the first thing is what is data? So in the data, we have integers, float, string and characters. So basically every computer, every server, every single web application or programs, they deal with data. Data can be of different type, it can be images, text, but on the fundamental level, they all are bits and they all are integers. They can be float, they can be string also, and they can be characters also. So since we are studying about data structures, it is important to understand what is data. Now we will have to understand where this data is stored. So if we, need, we can understand where this data is stored, we can also understand why these data have these structures. Why do we need these structures, right? So data is stored in two ways. The first one is the random access memory, which you can see here. And the second way of storing data is store them in hard drives or the solid state drives. The random access memory is actually a faster memory. It is a, uh, a faster access and all the instructions that you are going to write, you will write a program in Java. You will write a program in C++. It doesn't matter. That is a set of instructions for the CPU. So what the CPU does is CPU is the central processing unit. It takes all the instructions from the program and it takes them and runs them at the execution time. So this basically here you are seeing is RAM. We will come to the uh, detailed structure of RAM. We will understand how CPU reads and writes into the RAM. But the fundamental is that the data is stored inside RAM and hard drive, but the CPU accesses only the data which is stored temporarily in the random access memory. Data is stored permanently in the hard drive and SSD and they, all the instructions will be fetched uh, by the CPU from the hard drive and also the random access memory. The instructions gets loaded in this RAM. So we need to understand what these programs contains. These program, which is a set of instructions which you are going to write, will contain some variables, some constants, some functions. So let's say you write a program and you write int i equals to 10. So it will be stored inside of a RAM. So all the data that the CPU wants to execute is available for the RAM and it is available for the execution time. So what exactly is execution time and compile time? Compile time means that you are actually compiling the program. You are making it sure that the set of instructions are available at uh, inside of the RAM. It is allocated inside of the RAM. Execution time is the time when the program is actually executing which means the CPU is performing read and write operations in the RAM and is running those instructions. So you can see here that CPU reads these instructions from RAM than hard drive. Why? Because the RAM is faster. So CPU will read and write this data, which is stored in the memory. And you can see that RAM is a linear storage of memory. So these blocks that we are seeing uh, here is actually the physical representation of a RAM. A RAM will contain these bytes of blocks and these blocks make up the whole RAM. So RAM is linear in structure. So the question is, if the RAM is linear in structure, it means we can store the data only in the linear form. Like the first data will come here, then second will come here, the third will come here and so on. But that is not the case because RAM has a very important feature, which is memory address. This is a very important feature of the RAM, which is the memory address. So how does the CPU knows which instruction needs to be executed? The answer is that the CPU accesses a memory address. So every block in this RAM has a memory address and it can be any number. 
for example, I'm going to take just for the sake of example, I'm going to take 1001, then comes 1002, 1003 and so on. So this is actually the memory address of the block which is here, right? So all of the blocks in the RAM has a memory address. Now the question is, what is the use of this memory address and how can we use this to create data structures? So the answer to that question comes here that it becomes very essential. First, we need to understand why we need to structure the data, right? If we have integers, why not to store them just linearly? Why do we need to store them in a form of a structure? So you can see that it becomes essential to store data in the form of different structures because they have different applications. So you will come up with different types of problems when you will be solving some problems, some algorithms. You will require a particular data to be in a particular structure. If that data is in that form of structure, it will be easier for the CPU to access the uh, RAM because whenever CPU access a particular block of storage, it takes some time for it to perform. So you can see here, I have written here that when the CPU reads and writes data in memory, it takes some time to perform that particular operation. Since it takes some time to perform the operation, we have to minimize this time. We have to make sure that the time which is taken by the CPU to access this RAM is minimized. Then only we will be able to write efficient programs. All you can see there are so many web applications, they run on servers and each server has a CPU. So CPU is a very extensive resource. It is a very important resource and we need to make sure that the CPU is not busy doing operations inefficiently. For that, we require the data structures. Now the question is, we have different types of data structures. We will, we will study the stack data structure, linked list, binary trees, graph data structure. So can we not have a single data structure that can meet all, uh, that can meet all the needs of a particular application? The answer to that is no. Each and every data structure has a different functionality and is used in entirely different concept. So each of the data structures have different applications. And when I will teach each and every data structure, I will also tell you that these are the applications of this data structure. And these are the questions that are mostly asked in uh, coding interviews also. So now here you can see that here I have drawn three different structures. These circular, you can see these are actually the data itself. So these, you can see they are connected. This is the data and this is also the data. Now, in order to get this data structure, in order to get this data structure, the thing is that the RAM is linear. So all of this data will be stored in the linear format only. But if we want to connect one node with another, what we can do is we can use pointers. So here you can see an important point. I'm going to mark a star here. That main memory is the linear storage. To obtain these different structures, we know that this is linear. So if we want to obtain such type of structures, we will, we are going to use the pointers or memory references. So what are pointers or memory references? Pointers actually are used to basically point to a particular block of storage. So let's say that here at this point, we have this node, which has a data 10 and this node, let's say has a data nine. So I, if I want to connect these two, right. And these two are not actually stored in continuous fashion. So let's say there is a variable I equals to 10 and there is a variable J equals to nine and I want to connect them, right? So you can see there is a connection between them. So if I want to connect them and don't want to store it continuously, what I can do is I can actually use a pointer. So what a pointer will do here is if I want to go to nine, let's say nine is uh, allocated at this memory block, right? And I want to connect these two. So what I will do is I will create a memory reference to this position. So this arrow right here, which we're seeing here is actually a pointer or a memory reference. Since pointers are not available in Java, but there is a way to implement pointers or memory referencing. And we will see that in later tutorials, how this is achieved. But at this point, you should remember that these structures can be created by using uh, the pointers, right? So you, you will first have to allocate the data and then you can use pointers to connect them. And then you can obtain any data structure you want. This data structure, which we are seeing here is an example of a binary tree. This data structure is actually a graph. A graph data structure is a very important data structure as it uh, actually shows a relationship between two nodes. And here we have this data structure, which is the linked list. So these, you can see all of these have the same data. There is absolutely nothing different with the data, but since they are connected differently, they have different structures. So these structures help the CPU to 
to actually make the operations perform in less time complexity to get less space complexity. So time and space are two very crucial resources for every program. And we need to make sure to use the right data structure in order to get the our requirements done and also to minimize the time and space complexity. I will also explain the time complexity and space complexity of each and every data structure in the upcoming modules. So that's all for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will start with the array data structure, which is another very important data structure and it uses continuous memory blocks of uh, storage. So we will study that later in the next module. So that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching.